So maybe it's time now to transition into a dream. Okay. Our dreamer is a 29-year-old male who is an architect. And he tells us this dream. I'm on a beach. I think my mother is not too far. A woman in a red bikini is standing in the sea, in the shallow waters. She is blonde, tan, with hypersexualized features such as breast implants. I try to interact with her in a sexual way. I'm at her knees. I'm consumed by lust and desire. She tells me that she has to go, but that she will be back. As she leaves, the day turns into night, and she comes back walking on the beach this time. She is now a brunette, slightly skinnier in sweatpants. She also looks more natural. She invites me to follow her. We are now in the living room of the house I grew up in. I still feel that strong sexual desire for her. She sits in our ottoman chair and offers me a bowl of cereal. As I take the bowl to go eat it in the kitchen, every spoonful I grab contains long hair. Somehow, I know that it's hers and I'm slightly disgusted and simply not able to eat. Hmm. For context, he writes, six months ago I moved to the United States for a job I met a woman shortly after, and we are now engaged. Last week, we moved in together in a small house. Next week, she will meet my siblings and mother for the first time. He okay. says the main feelings in the dream were lust, desire, and disgust. And he offers a bit of explanation for some of the dream elements. He says, My fiancé's dad died of multiple sclerosis last year, and she hasn't done the blood test to know if she carries the genetic markers for that as well. Hmm. Well, I, I have a, a quick take uh, on the dream, which is how important it is and how fraught it is mm. when you introduce your fiance or a boyfriend or any significant other to your family for the first time. Mm. So since his, his mother and siblings are going to meet the fiance for the first time, I, you know, my, I'm assuming, okay, they're going back home mm -hmm. uh, where all of the family members are. And there's a lot of anxiety around this. So he's made a commitment. They've moved in together. Um, you know, gosh, I hope you like her. Uh, and uh, the dream itself says, I'm on a beach. I think my mother is not too far. <laughs> that, says, that says a very specific <laughs> stage going into uh, the erotic next section. Freud would have a field yeah. day. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I'm do a personal riff here. Uh, the first time that I went to meet my now husband's family was on a spring ba break. We'd been dating in college. Uh, uh, we were driving down to Florida with a bunch of other people. And I'm about to meet um, my boyfriend's, at that point, uh, family for the first time. His brother, his sister, his father, his mother. And we get to about... Uh, maybe South Carolina, heading into Florida, which is where his family lived. And all of a sudden, I had one of these uh, moments of like, what am I doing? I am wandering into, uh, you know, who knows what? What if they don't like me? Mm. <laughs> it's, it's very fraught. So I'm projecting that, but it, it doesn't seem too too far uh, to reach, that it, it's a big deal. Um, here's the person I've chosen in life. We've moved in together. Um, how's this going to go? So the anxiety, perhaps the trepidation. <clears throat> I, I think the dream is, on one level, commenting on that because there is an evolution in his relationship to the feminine. 
He's yes. on the beach. The mother is in the proximity. The beach is often interpreted as this kind of liminal, thin place where mm-hmm. we could walk into the ocean, which represents that the deep unconscious. We're on the sand, so we're in a little bit of safe ego space, but we're right on that line. Could have one mm-hmm. foot in either world easily. Right. And the mother is close. So the mother is close in consciousness, and the, the relationship that he has with his mother, I would imagine, is in some ways influencing the, the rest of the dream, mm-hmm. or at least we might find evidence yeah. of that. So there's an evolution in his attitude. The woman, the first woman, uh, is, offers such an exaggerated sexual dynamism so the feminine yes. is overwhelmingly erotic. Uh, I mean, an yes. Aphrodite coming out of the sea on the on the clamshell, you know, as, yeah. as she's sometimes depicted, and it's so overwhelming that he is just on his knees before the yes. archetypal power of the feminine. Yeah. I, I love that the next iteration, she's relatable. She looks kind of natural. Mm-hmm. She's not so exaggerated. He can, he's on his own feet. At least he's not knocked to his knees. Yeah. And then the third encounter, he's really ambivalent. Ah, wow, hair in my cereal. Yuck. Ah. So there's, there's um, a much more complicated, fulsome experience with the feminine that's attained. I am also um, really aware that as the dream progresses, uh, he says we are now in the living room of the of the house I grew up in. Mm-hmm. So as um, a, as he in waking life prepares to uh, go back to his place of origin, uh, the child and childhood complexes kick up. Mm-hmm. Uh, mother is at first not too far, and then we're in the living room where everybody goes to interact uh, a- a- of the house he grew up in. And uh, it's curious that for the first woman who is sort of, you know, uh, emblematic of everything, like Marilyn Monroe, of, you know, the hot babe in the red bikini, um, that there's all this sexual desire, uh, and it's still there the second time around where the woman is the brunette, she's skinnier, she's in sweatpants, she looks more natural. But there, mm-hmm. there's still a lot of sexual energy sure. here. And I think that, too, creates a tension, and I would, I would put big money down on um, many a young couple going back to the family of origin uh, with a fiancé and trying to balance the sexual desire in the home you grew up in when your parents are somewhere in the house or nearby, uh, it it really sets up a, a lot of activity in the psyche. Uh, you know, and every teenager has experienced it of, you know, you're making out on the couch and then you you hear footsteps and it's like, well, I'm pulling back. Um, we were just talking. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) come on. I know you did this too. Um, so, uh, but I'm still a little puzzled about the hair in the bowl of, of cereal. Mm-hmm. Of what other part of the psyche comes up to say, you know, don't do that here. Don't have, um, don't have sexual inclinations uh, in the house. Well, uh, I'm, yeah, it okay. turns off. So I think that um, we're in that realm, as is true for all, that the anima and the animus have to separate out from the parental complexes. You know, mm-hmm. for, for him, the mother is the first image of the feminine and the breasts yeah. 
are important. Yes. I mean, so the breasts in his adult mind seem exaggerated, but when you're a baby, the breast is bigger than your head. I mean, the breasts are as wide <laughs> as your shoulders. You know, it's, it is of mythic proportion. And we have yes. memories of that relationship. I mean, we have, we have visual images and sensory uh, memories that are foundational of the magnitude of the breast and its ability to sate, you know, our howling hungers and comfort us and mm -hmm. all the good stuff that mm -hmm. happens in that moment. So yeah. his mother is nearby and the first emergence of the anima one is very archetypal. The breasts are said substantive and she's at, he is at her knees, which is when you think about a little child coming up to her knees, you know, you have innumerable memories of standing there being mm -hmm. only about as high as your mom's knees. So he's really in that place where um, the anima is trying to separate out from the mother complex. And mm -hmm. one of the ways that we can imagine that is he's able to feel that enormous sexual dynamism absent the incest taboo. So he's able to experience that without feeling ashamed, mm -hmm. which is great because that needs to happen. If the mother um, archetype is too involved with the anima, then the young man is going to feel very ambivalent. It's going to feel um, strangely mm -hmm. and disturbingly transgressive to feel um, so sexually interested. Yeah. No, I think you're making a really good point about there. there's no ambivalence about the anima figure uh, being his fiance in the dream, these two dream women. Uh, so the mother complex is not interfering with his ability to access uh, his sexual desire through these uh, sexualized images of women. But something comes up. That's right. That it says, does. Uh, "Not here. And, uh, there's going to be hair in the cer cereal, and it's going to be gross, and it's yucky." Um, so, so there, there is a, a place of real internal conflict. Exactly. And what I would like to say is, uh, which is a wonderful <laughs> mythologic amplification, is. Um, the goddess of the grains is called Ceres, which is where we get the word cereal from. Ah, that's so, right. So there's the mother ah. who's kind of around but not visible. We have the first emergence of the sexualized object. Uh -huh. Then she becomes a little more humanized, which she's still lovely, uh -huh. but she isn't so hypersexual. And then we find out that she really is still has too much of the mother in it. So then she gives him ah. the bowl of cereal, and Ceres wow. is the goddess of agriculture, grain, fertility, and motherly relationships. And yes. so when the mother kind of um, breaks back into the um, erotic dimension, he can't stomach wow. that. It's incestuous, right. it's disgusting. Yeah. I think you just landed on an archetypal amplification uh, through uh, connecting serial to series, which is really great stuff. And and series or Demeter is absolutely a a real motherly image. She creates. She makes uh, the crops grow. Uh, she rescued her daughter Persephone uh, from Hades. So uh, here is the mother archetype. Um, so I'm uh, changing what I said before. The mother archetype is present in this very subtle but substantial uh, symbolism of the bowl of cereal because he could have been offered anything to eat. He could have been offered a sandwich, um, a, a, an apple, a piece of fruit, anything, but he's offered cereal. And there's too so, much of the mother uh, bringing... in there, so it's yucky. 
Yeah, <laughs> right. And having a fiance in the home where your mom is present uh, is a big deal. Uh, and how do we relate to the feminine and the internal feminine of uh, his own anima, you know, given these uh, countervailing uh, currents of what it's like to relate to mom mm -hmm. and maybe a sister mm -hmm. and what it is like to have access to uh, sexuality with a partner. Um, and I also wonder about if whether there is some ambivalence uh, in, that is um, implicit, perhaps, in his uh, statement that uh, that his fiance's father died of, of multiple sclerosis, and uh, she hasn't done the blood test to know she carries genetic uh, markers. So I didn't know that there was a blood test, but um, evidently there is. And that this is a piece of unfinished business, at the very least, for him, that sets up an ambivalence of, of a fiancé if we're going to have uh, a lifetime partnership. Uh, this, this matters to know this. Exactly. So that can be part of what's hard to stomach at the end mm -hmm. of, the, um, yeah. of the dream that, yeah. you know, can I really take in that there could be something dangerous that is, um, is present? I also yeah. want to say that the dream is also giving him an opportunity to understand why he may sometimes hypersexualize women as a way of trying to separate the mother archetype out from the anima. Mm -hmm. Because the first um, image of the goddess. And I think about these uh, wonderful um, Indian statues of goddesses and their breasts are these like perfect circular half melons. I mean, <laughs> yes. it's, it, it's just so, everything is so symmetrical, so perfect. And that that is a way of him trying to make sure that the motherly stuff is somewhere else, that she's purely an mm -hmm. erotic object. And, and yeah. that's reasonable. I mean, the psyche is trying to yeah. figure out how to separate mother and anima, mother and lover. Mm -hmm. It comes back in because that process of separating out the mother and the anima is going to happen iteratively. That This will happen over and over and over again. And I mm -hmm. think there is a recommendation in the dream, one, to look at the fiancé and say, are there some dynamics here where I am unconsciously pressing her to, to mother me? And is that really what I want? Does that make sense to me? Is that what she wants? Am I sometimes being hypersexual in the relationship as a way of trying to um, vanquish the motherly ambivalence, but also perhaps exaggerating my perception of my fiance because it's so disturbing? see her in a motherly fashion. So yeah. he's, he's working okay. something out in the dream, and the dream is helping him work something out. Yes.